let's go to this topic. Do you think the Montreal Canadiens skipping Shane Wright was a mistake? Well, what team did he get uh, picked up by Shane Wright? He got picked fourth overall by the Seattle Kraken. Seattle, that's right. I was just looking at his stuff right now. Um, see, well, that's one of those things. It's uh, it's difficult to really to really call that one. He may have been overall the better pick right now, but let me take a look at, at him overall for a second, right? Oh, let me. I'm gonna pick up his. Uh... We're gonna head yep. up on over. The kid, this gotcha. Is Six low. one, 199 pounds. Fourth overall, first right. He shoots right-handed. He's 18 years old. Uh, let's see his career. I mean, in the OHL, he did really well. But in the under 20 for Canada, he only played two games. Had one assist. That uh, that was it for him. I mean, but. Like, let's look at this. Let's just go into it. I'm not going to go do triple A because, like, he, well, triple A, he had a phenomenal season under 16, yeah. 100. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, bro, <laughs> oh, yeah. bro, bro, that's you crazy. go to triple A, we're looking at way bigger numbers. Like, that's just ridiculous. So, we're not no, going to touch that one. That's crazy. Um, no, I'm no, just going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna pretend that's what I put up. Um, but <laughs> King, Kings, Kingston, for Kingston, his first year is in the OHL. 58 yep. games played, 39 goals, 27 says 66 points. That's really good. Yep. Um, he played uh, Canada Black under 17, was the captain apparently. Five games played, four goals, four goals, three assists, seven points. That's solid. Uh, he didn't play obviously in the COVID year because uh, all of that going in, but he played for the under 18 Canada mm-hmm. WJC. Five games played, nine goals, five assists for 14 points. Extremely good tournament. Yep. Uh, this past season with the Kingston Frontiacs, he had 63 games played, 32 goals, 62 assists for 94. Points. I mean, uh, some people are knocking his attitude that he had, like, he was very cocky, very full of himself. Mm-hmm. I know everybody wants people to be humble. Now, I'm not seen to be like a Yakupov, like, ignorant, where it's like, oh, like, uh, I'm above the world when, you know, he had a lot of holes in his game. Mm-hmm. But to, um, to kind of say that these guys don't have an ego at all. I mean, we'd be lying to ourselves, dude. We have course, egos in, in have our to day-to-day. Ego. We, we have egos in our day-to-day jobs. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not, like, as long as he's not telling teams, like, oh, like, go F yourself, I'm, I'm fine with him being, like, you're not going to, I'm not going to be around and, like, pick five. Like, this guy, or pick four, this guy has the belief that he's going to get first overall. And to be fair, I think, I think Shane Wright has the chance to develop, like, to that number one center and probably better than Slavsky, Right. And that's what I'm calling him, keeping it very simple for me and my uh, very, very, very simple self. But I think he has the potential to be greater because he's going to be a center mm-hmm. and he could be a two way player. Mm-hmm. I know people question the maturity, but how old is this person again? Like, 18? 18 years old. I believe 18. 18 uh, years old, six foot, 190. 18 years old. Obviously, there are more eighteen. There's some. There are some more mature eighteen-year-olds than others, and some are more programmed better, where they're just going to respond like very like PC, very like appropriate. But he, you know, he's eighteen. He's going to grow. You're going to learn. You know, as long as he's not, uh, you know, doing anything like illegal or disgusting, I'm fine with it. And um, I think that for me personally, I think Montreal should have gone with Shane Wright because I think. Having another center in their system to the potential to be another top guy would have had Montreal looking pretty elite. Now, I could be wrong, right? I could be completely wrong, and hell, who knows? Maybe Slavovsky, Slavskovsky, whatever how you say it, will be. He could turn out to be a very elite player. It, you know, maybe it's a wash, or maybe it's in favor for Montreal with this draft pick, but, you know, I think. Passing up the opportunity to draft such a good center, I, I don't know. I think centers you're one of your most important positions next to goaltending in hockey, and yeah, that's but, but, you know. But I I think I, for them I think that you look at their their center core and yeah, always adding more centers is always a nice thing. But let's face some facts, right? You can have too much of one position. True. Right. Uh, they don't necessarily translate to wings all the time, all that stuff, whatnot. 
But you look at you look at what they have, as far as Montreal is concerned, you already have about five, six guys that can play center. Yeah. Right? You have some of those guys that also play wing, but as you and I both know, just because you say you can doesn't mean, doesn't mean you can. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay? Right? Yeah. So that's one of those situations. Right? Maybe they said, okay, look, we're pretty heavy in the middle with some talent and some potential talent already. Some guys that are possibly going up. Uh, uh, okay, they got the Dosh, the Dosh situation handled and everything else. Right? But what they don't have is um, more than one or two, you know, guys that really fit the wing role mm. and can be considered going elite. Now, I looked I looked at um, Slav, Slavgoski, right? I looked at his numbers. Nothing nothing to call home about. So maybe they saw something we didn't. The kid's 6'4", 218. Maybe Martin St. Louis say, hey, listen, I need a guy that I can sit on top of his shoulders when I'm coaching everybody else, and this <laughs> is the guy, right? Who knows? It may have been something as simple as that, <laughs> right? So but, but, <laughs> but, I mean, if you look at his numbers, he... He's a big boy. Like he's eighteen, six four, two twenty nine. Like he's a big freaking boy. And right. You can't so, teach that. You can't teach that, right? But now you take him. You have a guy like Martin St. Louis. If he can make him play his type of game with that body frame, the kid could be something special. I mean, so to be fair to this kid, because he played in the pros. That's the pro league there. Mm-hmm. Um, in the pro league, in the Le- Liga. 31 games played, 5 goals, 5 assists for 10 points. Nothing that's special. The, nothing special, but you're playing against men and you're like a 17-year-old. That's yeah. that's p- pretty solid. Yeah. Um, it seemed when he played in the under-20 where he should have been, 11 games played, 6 goals, 12 assists, 18 points, over a point per game. Pretty solid. Yeah. Uh, season before that, 16 games played, 8 goals, 5 assists, 13 points. I mean... In the Slovak under-18 team, International Junior, 6 games played, 4 goals, 7 assists for 11 points. You know, like, I think... I think they went I, for the fit. I think they, they, they I, went for I, I think that the, I think with the fit, doing. and it's weird because the pandemic, unfortunately, is it kind of makes it hard for some of these because everything was yeah. shut down. Yeah. Um, I mean, in a more fuller season for the under-18 team, um, 19, I mean, 39 games played, 22 goals, 30 assists for 52 points. I mean, it does look like he has the potential to be a good point producer, and he's big. Um, we just don't know how well that's going to translate. So we'll, we'll see. Um, I think that like in the under 18, the Halinka Gruxy cup, five games played, three goals, six assists, nine points. Like maybe he impressed, saw some, like scouts saw something there. I mean, to be fair, and I'm not trying to, cause he's, he's a Slovak, right? He's from Slovakia. Yeah. Um, and they had like that was the first time ever three Slovakians were picked in the first round, yep. um, in history of the NHL. But I'll say this: is that quite frankly, like Pavel Bury, right? And this was because of the Red Wall. I'm not completely comparing the two. Due to kind of the secretive information and like how things were so difficult to obtain, like they got. I think what did the Canucks get Pavel Bury like in the fourth or fifth round? Yeah. Like, and it was, was like deep. absolutely, was it, it's absolutely crazy because Pavel Burry is a Hall of Famer, one of the best fucking players to ever play the game, and um, I and I I contend to this day, if Pavel Burry didn't get hurt and his knees start going, he would have put up even more prolific numbers. But back on point here is that this guy's big, um, got some weight on him already. He's played against men, so I think he has the potential maybe to have the better first year as a rookie. But um, I, I don't know. Maybe uh, not trying to be biased. I think maybe Shane Wright might be the better prospect overall. But like I said, I could be proven wrong. So Pavel Burr was picked 113th in the 1989 draft. 113th. That's crazy. Jesus. You know, That's... but hey, it, it, someone saw something, right? The fact that three <laughs> Slovakian players got picked in the uh, in the first round. Right? There's something we're not seeing. There's something something they saw. Something something is something's missing in translation. Um you hope, right? Because you hope that they made a good pick. Mm. Um but 
I mean, just statistically, none of us see it. I don't think anybody says, like, wow, you know, great pick. Everybody's like, okay, we got to see what he does. Hmm. Right? Whereas, right, he's a little bit more proven. It's almost like, um, right is more like Sam Darnold. If you go Oof. to football, right? Oof. Hold on, hold Oof, on. That's that's disrespectful. Right? He was expected to be the number one pick, and he fell down. Mm. Right, and he got picked up by the Jets. I'm looking at you sideways right now. Keep going. <laughs> of course you are. Right, uh, he got picked up by by the Jets. Now I'm not saying Seattle's the Jets, right? But let's face some let's face some facts here. You're going to a franchise that's in their what second year, mm-hmm. right? They're still growing. Nobody knows where. Nobody knows how. Right? There's still a lot of questions to be asked. Will he be coached properly enough to really fulfill his potential? Whereas um, the Slovakian player, right? I'm not going to butcher his name because I'm not looking at it right now. Um, Slavoski. Slavoski. Yeah, I got it. Um He's going into a team that has mostly young players and he may be able to just fit in. So who may make the more immediate impact? Maybe Wright will make a more immediate impact because he's going to be on a team that's kind of questionable all around. You know, it's Mm -hmm. still in a growing phase, right? But who will develop best? It may not be Wright. Just saying. I mean, I think Wright has all the tools, though, to be that that next piece. And watching him play junior, he was electric. I mean, I think he was. I think he was an electric player, very good player. And I think, um, I don't know. I th- Obviously, I, I we, 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 I, we don't know. We don't know. We, we don't know who's going to develop. Right, right. right. But, um, I mean, pure numbers-wise, yeah, I think Montreal messed up. I think they should have probably picked up right, numbers-wise. Um, but the part that we don't know is how much, like you said, there was there was talks of his persona, mm-hmm. right, and his attitude. How much of that would have affected growth, the locker room of what they're trying to build in Montreal, and how much was he humbled by this experience, or maybe even added a chip on his shoulder that's going to make him work even harder to prove a point. So I mean, that's, that's true. Like it, it, This might actually have been the best thing to happen to Shane Wright. You know what I mean? Because maybe, because yeah. you, if, you, if you always have that one guy who's been told, you are the man, you are the best, Paul, right? Um, and situations like that happen, right? It takes you back a second to make you realize, like, you know what? Maybe I don't have everything in the bag. Maybe I don't have the whole thing down. Maybe I need to work more at my... And before you know it, you're improving your game more than you even thought, right? Maybe that yeah. happens to Shane Wright. Maybe, hopefully, that happens to him. And maybe, maybe he's the next superstar. You know what I'm saying? But we don't know. These are speculations. These are assumptions. These are based off of numbers and, and ideologies, right? And we're hoping that... Um, that he does have a good career and that maybe Montreal does eat their words or maybe it goes the other way around and maybe uh, Wright ends up being one of those, you know, casual players that gets traded from team to team to team and he was just one of those guys that was really good for where he was at. 